Okay, this is the second part of lesson 5.1. We're going to talk about finding an equation for the inverse functions. And we're going to, the notation for the inverse function, this f with the little negative one with the x over it here, is written, is said as, is read as um, f inverse. So it's the, the f inverse is how we read that whenever we, we come across this, is f inverse. And it's not to be confused, it's not the same as 1 over f of x like you might think of when you do this the this inverse thing on your calculator does that kind of function does that kind of operation on the calculator that's not what we're talking about we're talking about the inverse function which is different than that and the thing on this slide I want you to to, to understand is that the domain of f our domain and range, right? We have a domain and range of whatever function we're talking about. And then we have the inverse of it. We have the inverse, inverse, and the inverse of our function, inverse of f, f inverse. What happens here is the domain and range switch. So the range of f, whatever the range is, becomes the domain of our inverse, and the domain of f becomes the range of our inverse. So the domain and range, they switch on the inverse. So whatever the range was, that's now the domain. Whatever the domain was, that's now the range. Okay, so to how do we find the inverse? Okay, how do you, you need to, we have some problems where we need to find the equation of the inverse of f of x. Um, first thing it says to do is exchange x and y. Well, before even that, you have to make sure that we have a one-to-one -one function. So if you have an equation, that, you know, some problems in the book or some wherever they are, and they say, you know, it's got an x squared in it, it's probably not going to have an inverse, right? Because there's, it's not a one-to-one -one function. So first, make sure you're, before you do any of these things, on this slide, be sure you are working with the one-to-one -one function. Most of the time they will because otherwise the problem sets be pretty simple. But the first step you do is you interchange the x and y. So that's the first step. So in our equations, we just physically switch the x and y's around. Then we solve our y. We use our algebra skills to solve for y. And then the last part we do is a little nitpicky but they like to do it. They say the inverse of x is we replace that y with the inverse. And then we have to consider any um, restrictions on range and domain, mostly when we're talking about these x and y's. That's what they um, are talking about here, domain and range restrictions. Okay, so are the functions that we're talking about, or the, the original function, does it have some restrictions on its domain or range? Okay, so we're going to start out with an easy one here find the inverse if it exists of f of x equals 4x plus 6. Well, we, you know, if it exists, is this a one-to-one -one function? We look at it, yeah, it's just got 4x plus 6. That's just going to be a straight line, right? A linear equation with just divided by 5. So we're pretty confident that that's a one-to-one -one equation, okay? So the first thing you need to do is write, instead of f of x, you're going to write y. Okay, so we're right, y equals 4y plus 6 over 5. Okay, the reason we do that, the only reason we do that, is so now we have an x and a y to exchange. Okay, so now instead of x, y over here, I'm going to put x equals 4 times y. plus 6, all over 5, okay? So I just exchanged my x's and y's, right? I just exchanged them. Whatever I had, an x, I put a y, I put a y, I put an x. Now I'm going to solve for y. I'm going to solve for y over here on the, the right side of the um, screen where I have more room. And the first thing I need to do is multiply both sides by 5, get rid of that fraction there, so I'm going to end up with... 5x equals 4y plus 6. Subtract 6 from each side. 5x minus 6 equals 4y. Divide each side by 4. 5x minus 6 over 4 equals y. Right? So I'm going to write over here. 
I'm going to write y equals 5x minus 6 over 4. Okay, so that's going to be um, my equation. That's my inverse. And then just to make you know the math people happy, I'm going to write the inverse of x. No, don't forget the negative 1 there. Equals 5x plus 6 over 4. So we just started with a basic example. We're going to do one a little harder in a minute, but that's the that's the um, the process you go through, right? From this, interchange the x and y, solve for y, and replace it with that, and make sure there's any restrictions that should be considered. Okay, do we have any restrictions to consider on this? No, this is, you know, there's, this is defined for every x and y. The, the domain is negative to positive infinity. The range the same. Same here. So the range, there's no restrictions on the range and domain here. No restrictions on the range and domain in our inverse either. Okay. The graph of the inverse of x if f and the inverse are, are inverse functions and f of a equals b, so we put some value in our um, f function, I got a b value out of it for real numbers a and b, then the inverse, if I put b as the input for the inverse, I'm going to get a out of it. That's what we did the other day when we had that function of, um, we put 10, you know, 8x, and 1 8 x, we had those two functions. Those are inverses of each other. Um, this one, AB, if we have a point on a graph AB and BA is on the inverse. So the X's and Y's are switched, right? We um, switch the X and the Y, right? So now the A is the X and the B is the Y on this one. They're switched. And when they do that, if a, if a function is one-to-one, -one, the graph of its inverse is um, a reflection of the graph of f across the line y equals x. So if we this, they have the graph of y equals x here in red on the slide. And when we reflect that, when we exchange the x and the y's, we exchange the b and the a, we get a reflection across this, this line. This is a reflection. Reflection, a flip, if you want to be um, less mathematical about it, a flip across the line y equals x. So these functions, we graph both the function and its, and its inverse. They'll be reflected across a, the uh, mirror images of each other across the line y equals x. Okay, so finding the inverse of a function with a restricted domain. Okay, so and we have an example here, and it talks about a restricted domain, and it says let f of x equal the square root of 5, x plus 5, and find the inverse of that function. Okay, so we're looking at, we know from, you know, the title here, we're going to have some restrictions on it. So what's the, what's the domain of, of f of x is going to be what? Well, we have a square root here. The square root has to be positive, right? We're not talking about... Um, Imaginary numbers, we're talking about positive real numbers here. So the domain has to be all the values that make that positive. So that would be when x goes from negative 5 to infinity. And what would the range be on that? The range would be on a square root function. The square root function goes from 0 to infinity, right? It can be 0 when it's negative 5 and it goes up to infinity that way. Okay, so we have those restrictions on our function first off. Let me look at that. Okay, see, I usually like to look at the restrictions first. You can do it at the end, but sometimes you forget. And now we're going to, you follow our rules and, you know, follow the rules we had a couple slides ago. Oops. Right here, we're going to interchange the x and the y. We're going to solve for y and replace it with, um, x with the uh, inverse notation there. So we go through this and this. Okay, so now we're going to write it out. y equals 
x plus 5. Okay, so then we're going to exchange the x and the y. x equals the square root of y plus 5, right? That's the first step. That's the um, exchange x and y. Now we're just going to solve for y. Okay, to do that, we need to get rid of the square root, so we're going to square both sides to get rid of the square root. So we do that, we get x squared equals y plus 5, and subtract 5 from each side, x squared minus 5 equals y. Or if we write the proper inverse notation, the inverse, make sure you put the negative 1 there, of x equals x squared minus y. Okay, but we're not quite done. Oops. Not quite done because I can't. Minus 5. So it should be. Okay, so that's what, this is the inverse function. But there's some restrictions on it, right? The 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 range and domain are, are switched here, right? We had a restricted domain. We came up with this range. And so this function here has a restriction on it right the so the restriction on our inverse function this is a you know this is our you know it's an x squared down here you know at minus one well, I didn't draw it very well but it's an x squared it's a parabola right at the going down here just shifted down a little bit at negative five right that's what it looks like so there's no real restrictions on this domain as it's written right here, but because it came as an inverse of a function that was restricted, we're going to have to put some restrictions on it, right? Because that function, the other function that it's the inverse of, is not defined everywhere. So this function, this inverse function, is only good when the when the domain is the domain is from uh, it could be zero to um, infinity when x is from zero x is from zero to infinity so if we um, write that x is greater than or equal to zero would be another way to write that okay so that's we have to have that restriction on our inverse function we have a function we started with the f of x function had a restricted range and it had a restricted domain that we're going to have to have those restrictions on the inverse and remember the the range now is the domain the domain now is the range and if we graph those functions they um put the graph over there i want to change the properties I wanted to start at um, change how this looks a little bit so we can put them on there well maybe I'll put the other one on first before I do that okay I'll put the other one on and we get that and I want to change how this looks a little bit so we can see both graphs and I change the properties here and um, negative five, five, oops. That didn't work out too well. Okay, that's better. Okay, so I have this one, and I'm not really interested in this one. So this one start. I'm not this. This part of of this graph is not in play right because that x had to be um, the restriction on this one was that the x had to be greater than or equal to zero so this part that i squiggled out in blue is not 
in, not in play on it. And if I kind of dash lines, well, let me, uh, this is not quite how I want it. And I want that one to be one. Okay, that's what I wanted. Now I can see a little better. And then if I put in, if I put in my dash lines here, let me do um, like this reflection. If I could draw a straight line, well, you can see I drew it better on the uh, first quadrant. It's a dash line. This is the um, This is the y equals x I put in black. You can see that that's a reflection. This red line and the purple line are reflected over the line y equals x. If I could have drawn a little better, I would have. But <laughs> that's the way it ends. So that's the, only, that's the, uh, the last part of it. It's just showing that, that they are reflections when you don't consider the part that is um, restricted. So these two are inverses of each other reflections across the line y equals x and that's the end of lesson 5.1